Hi, this is Ben Wright Design. I make video games professionally, but in this series we'll take a dive into fellow indie developers' projects, prototypes and jam entries, and discuss the pros, cons and cool things about each of them. So without further ado, let's dive into Game Dev Reviews Indie Releases. Episode 1 you might not guess it from the page's art or title, but Escape the Drop by Jano Games is a tidy little concept that blurs the lines between two of my favourite things, arcade gameplay and football. Football games sometimes feel like they have no beginner ground to work with. Football Manager can be incredibly daunting, and FIFA or Pro Evolution Soccer, while much more user friendly, can soon become overwhelming to new players. Escape the Drop hints at some of the previously mentioned game's features, but strips back the complexity. Not only that, it's full of fun little mini-games. Want to boost your team's morale? Take them to the golf course or on a lad's night out. Stadium management? You mean chasing pigeons off the field to gain a top score. Admittedly, Escape the Drop has a long way to go. It's still in early development and there's plenty of bugs and polish needed, but the playable demo is out now on itch, so be sure to check it out. For casual gamers who like the world of football, want to kill a little bit of time, and love the quick fire gameplay of arcade games, this is definitely worth keeping an eye on. It's still in very early development though. I give Escape the Drop in its current state a 5 out of 10, but it has the potential to grow into something special, especially if you like football. Our next game felt like both a hidden gem and the bane of my entire damn existence. Brick Boss by Ben James. This jam entry to Mundane Jam is based around the premise of physics based tower building. Sounds simple, right? Oh boy, you are wrong. The cleverly designed levels really push my basic engineering know how to their limits, as time and time again I fell to the wrath of gravity itself. It fits the jam's theme perfectly. In fact, if I'm being honest, I hadn't realized this was a jam game until after playing it, and when I discovered the jam was based around a tedious mechanic, it all made sense, because I was losing my mind with it. Obviously, jam entries must be taken with a pinch of salt, but Brick Boss felt very polished. The art was nice, the blocks didn't get lost in the background, and the audio and explosions topped it off nicely. I know physics based games can be a real drag to code sometimes, but Ben James has nailed this. My only criticism was the lack of an undo button. The amount of times I lost a heap of progress because of one wrong button press was infuriating. But hey, I guess that made the game fit the jam even better. A solid solo jam game and it gets an 8 out of 10 from me. Our final entry today is another very well polished jam entry, Fist Bump by the brilliantly named Fartfish. Designed for GeoJam, Fistbump is a journey of two absolute bros willing to do anything to get the sort of recognition that two fists touching is the only way to achieve. The concept of Fistbump is one I've seen many times in game jams, but there's good reason for it. It's simple and difficult at the same time. One player is controlled with the WASD keys and the other with the arrow keys. They must both meet in the middle to Fistbump, but without each other's help, that's impossible. I'm not sure if the game was meant to be played by one person or co-op, but trying to control both characters simultaneously added a level of challenge I really enjoyed, although I imagine it's more gratifying fist bumping your teammate and not yourself at the end. Much like Brick Boss, Fist Bump felt polished, the pixel art was top notch, the audio was great, the characters felt squishy, and I loved that you could do this without bugs or failure. Fist Bump doesn't break any moulds, but it's a solid jam puzzle game that's short but sweet and could easily be expanded further. In the midst of quarantine, I'd love to fist bump my best friend, and for that reason, I give it a 9 out of 10. Only missing out on 10 because of how short it was. So that brings us to the end of episode 1. It seems pixel art is still the king of the indie scene, and it's clear to see why. Escape the Drop showed us there's still room to innovate in familiar spaces. Brick Boss taught us that something tedious can still be engaging, and Fist Bump reminded us that sometimes we just need some human contact with our bro. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.